who then is more unjust than the one who invents lies about Allah and cries lies to the very truth when it comes to him? Is there not in Jahannam an abode for such disbelievers? But he who brings the truth and testifies wholeheartedly to it by accepting it as true, these it is who become secure against evil. They will have all that they desire with their Lord. Such is the reward of those who do excellent deeds. It is they who best deserve that Allah should rid them of the worst of evils which they committed before accepting Islam, and reward them according to the best and the noblest of their deeds. Is not Allah sufficient for his servant? And yet they would try to frighten you with those false gods they worship, other than him. They cannot succeed. None can guide the person to success whom Allah forsakes and judges to be astray. And none can mislead the person whom Allah guides. Is not Allah Almighty the Lord of retribution? If you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? They will certainly say, Allah. Say, have you ever judged the worth of that which you call upon apart from Allah? If Allah ever intended to do me some harm, will these whom you worship be able to avert his harm from me? Or can they withhold his mercy if he is pleased to treat me with mercy? Say, Allah is sufficient for me. In him do I put my trust. Those who have learnt to trust place their trust in him alone. Say, O oh my people, do your worst. I shall go on doing my best. You shall soon know. Who receives a punishment that will disgrace him in this life and who suffers from a lasting torment in the hereafter? Behold, we have revealed to you the perfect book. It comprises the truth and wisdom. It is for the good of humankind. So he who follows this guidance will do so for the good of his own soul. And he who goes astray will do so to its own detriment, and so will himself suffer the loss. You are not responsible for them. Allah takes away the souls of human beings at the time of their death, and also of those who are not yet dead during their sleep. He detains the souls of those against whom he passes the verdict of death and sends back those of others till a fixed period of time. There are signs in this for a people who would reflect. Have these polytheists chosen certain other intercessors apart from Allah? Say, what will they intercede for you? though they have no authority at all and understand nothing. Say, all intercession belongs to Allah entirely. To him belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. Then towards him you shall all be brought back. When the name of Allah alone is mentioned, the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter shrink with aversion. But when the names of those who are below his high station are mentioned, behold! They are at once filled with joy. Say, O Allah, originator of the heavens and the earth, possessor of the knowledge of the unseen and the seen, you alone judge between your servants concerning that wherein they differ. And had the wrongdoers owned all that the earth contains, and as much in addition to it, they would certainly offer it on the day of resurrection to redeem themselves from the woeful punishment. Yet there would appear to them, from Allah, that which they had never even thought of. And the evil consequences of the deeds they had deliberately done will become clear to them. And they will be caught by the very punishment they took no account of. And when harm afflicts a human being, he calls upon us. But when we confer our favor on him, he says, I have been given this only on account of my own knowledge. It is not right. It is only a trial. But most people do not know. Their predecessors had said the same thing. 
yet all their acquisitions were of no avail to them. And the evil consequences of their deeds did overtake them. As for the wrongdoers from among these, the evil consequences of their deeds shall surely overtake them also. They will never be able to frustrate God's plan. Do they not know that Allah multiplies the means of livelihood for such of his people as he will, and makes them scat for such of them as he pleases? Behold, there are signs in all of this for the people who would believe. Say, O oh, my servants who have committed excesses against their own souls, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Surely Allah forgives all sins. Verily, He is the great protector, the ever merciful. And turn to your Lord penitently, and submit yourselves to Him before the punishment befalls you. For once it does, you shall not be helped. And follow the best teaching suited to your condition that has been revealed to you from your Lord before you receive the punishment which will come upon you all of a sudden and take you unawares. Lest when it comes any one of you should say, Woe to me for failing in my duty towards Allah, for I made fun of his revelations. Or lest any one of you should say, If Allah had only guided me by force, I would of course have been of those who became secure against evil by carrying out my duties. Or lest any one of you should say when he sees the punishment, if I could only have the chance to return to the world, I too would then be of those who do good. God will say, No, this cannot be. There did come to you my messages, but you cried lies, and you behaved arrogantly, and were of the disbelievers. And on the day of resurrection, you will find the faces of those who invented lies in the name of Allah overcast with gloom and sorrow. It will be said to them, Is there not a resort in Jahanna for such arrogant people? On the contrary, Allah will deliver and grant salvation to those who guard it against evil and will lead them to a place of security and a success befitting their dignity. No evil shall touch them there, nor shall they ever grieve. Allah is the creator of all things, and he is an authority over everything to control. To him belong all that encircle the heavens and the earth. Those who deny the messages of Allah, these it is who are the very losers. Say, do you bid me to worship other besides Allah, O you ignorant ones? Mind, it has already been revealed to you and your predecessors, in case you associate partners with Allah in your worship, all your such works shall go in vain entirely, and you shall certainly be of the losers. Rather you should worship Allah alone, and be of the thankful to Him. They have not yet appreciated the attributes of Allah, with the importance and appreciation that He deserves. The earth altogether shall be in his grip of power on the day of resurrection, and the heavens shall be rolled up in his all-powerful hand, and will so lie at his absolute disposal. Holy is he. He is far above and beyond the things these polytheists associate with him. That day there shall be a blast on the trumpet, and all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will fall into a swoon except whom Allah will like to spare. Then there will be a blast another time, and behold, these people shall stand up awaiting judgment before their Lord. And the earth shall radiate with the light of her Lord, and the record of their deeds will be produced before them, and the prophets and the other witnesses shall be brought forward. People shall be judged in all fairness, and no injustice shall be done to any one of them and every soul shall be repaid in full for its deeds. For he, the Almighty Lord, is well aware of all that they do. And those who disbelieve will be driven to Jehenna in multitudes, until when they reach it, 
its gates will be opened, and its keepers will say to them, Did there not come to you messengers from among yourselves to proclaim to you the messages of your Lord, and to warn you about the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, They did come. Yet Allah's verdict of the punishment was justly due to have proved true against the disbelievers. It will be said to them, Enter the gates of Jehenna. You will be abiding therein for long. How evil is the abode of the arrogant people! And those who took their Lord as a shield will be conducted to paradise in multitudes until when they reach it and its gates are opened to welcome them, and its keepers say to them, Peace be upon you, be you happy and prosperous. Enter it, you will be abiding therein for ever and ever. They will say, All true and perfect praise belongs to Allah alone, who has fulfilled his promise made to us, and has allowed us to inherit the land enabling us to dwell in paradise wherever we please. How excellent is the reward of the doers of righteous deeds! And you will see the angels thronging around the throne of power, glorifying their Lord with his praise. And judgment will be given between the people with justice, and it will be said, All type of true and perfect praise belongs to Allah. The Lord of the Worlds Ghafir, Granter of Protection With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful Hamim, Allah is Praiseworthy and the Lord of Honor The gradual revelation of this perfect book is from Allah, the Almighty, the All-Knowing Granter of Protection against all sins and acceptor of repentance, severe in respect of punishment and the Lord of beneficence. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. Towards him is the eventual return. None disputes with regard to the commandments of Allah, except those who choose disbelief. Therefore, do not let their moving about and control in the land create misgivings in you. The people of Noah cried lies to our messages before these disbelievers, and so did various other groups after them. And every community strove to seize their messengers of God with a mind to destroy his mission. And they had begun arguing with him by means of false reasoning that they might thereby refute the truth. At this I seized them with my punishment. Behold. How terrible was my retribution as a sequel to their evil deeds. And it was in this way that the verdict of your Lord, that they shall be inmates of the fire, was confirmed against those who persisted in disbelief. Those who bear the throne of power, the angels and the prophets, and those who are around it, declare the glory of their Lord, along with extolling his name and praises. They believe in him and seek protection for those who believe, saying, Our Lord, you embrace each and everything in your mercy and knowledge, so grant protection to those who repent and follow the way shown by you and protect them from the torment of hell. Our Lord, admit them together with such of their fathers, their spouses, and their children, as are righteous and so worthy, to the gardens of eternity, which you have promised to them. You indeed are the Almighty, the All-Wise. And save them from all types of evils. Indeed, you will have shown mercy to the person whom on that day you save from evils. And that, to be saved, is indeed the great achievement. Those who disbelieve will be called and told on the day of requital, of course, Allah's abhorrence of you because of your persisting in disbelief is greater than your own abhorrence of yourselves this day. Recall when you were called to the faith, but you refused to come to it. They will say, Our Lord, 
Twice you have caused us to die, and twice you have given us life. We confess our sins now. Is then there a way out of the torment? They will be answered. This is because when Allah alone was called upon as one worthy to be worshipped, you rejected. But when partners were associated with him, you accepted. So the fact is established beyond doubt that this day sovereignty belongs only to Allah, the most sublime, the incomparably great. It is he who shows you signs and sends down for you provision from above for your physical and spiritual well-being. Yet none heed his revelations except one who turns to him again and again. Therefore call upon Allah, being sincere to him in obedience, though the disbelievers and polytheists may be averse to it. He it is who exalts the people in ranks, Lord of the throne of power. He sends his revelation by his own command to such of his servants as he will, that he may warn humankind of the day of meeting with the Lord, the day when they will all appear in their true light, and nothing about them is ever hidden from Allah. On that day they will be asked, To whom belongs the sovereignty this day? They will reply, It belongs only to Allah, the One, the All-Dominant. This day every soul shall be requited for deeds it has accomplished. No injustice will be done this day. Allah's reckoning will be swift indeed. And warn these people of the day drawing nigh day by day, when the hearts will leap to their throats due to suppressed grief. The unjust will have no warm-hearted friend, nor any intercessor who will be listened to and could prevail for them on that day. He knows the treachery of the eyes, even when they commit sinful acts secretly, and what the hearts conceal. And Allah judges in all fairness, but those idols whom they call upon apart from Allah can judge nothing at all. It is Allah who is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Have they never traveled in the land that they could see how evil was the end of their predecessors? They were mightier than these in power and in respect of leaving stronger marks, monuments, etc. in the land. But Allah took them to task and destroyed them for their sins. And they had no savior from the punishment of Allah. That was because their messengers of God came to them with evident proofs but they refused to believe in them. So Allah seized them with destruction. Powerful is he and stern his retribution. And indeed, we had already sent Moses with our messages and a clear authority. Towards Pharaoh, Haman, and Korah. Yet they said, This man is a sorcerer, a great liar. So when he brought them the truth from us, they said, Go on slaying the sons of those who have believed and joined with him, and go on sparing their women folk to make them immodest. But futile are the schemes of the disbelievers, and ever bound to fail. And Pharaoh said, Leave me alone. I will kill Moses. Let him call on his Lord. I fear lest he should change your faith or cause disorder to spread in the land. On the other hand, Moses said to his people, I seek refuge in him who is my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of reckoning. And a man who was a believer and belonged to the people of Pharaoh and kept his faith hidden said, are you bent upon killing a man simply because he says, Allah alone is my Lord, while he has already brought you clear proofs from your Lord? If he is a liar, he will suffer the sad consequences of his lie. And if he is truthful, then some of the things he threatened you with are sure to befall you. Indeed, Allah does not guide to success, 
the person who exceeds the bounds and is a great liar. O oh, my people, yours is the sovereignty today, and you dominate over the country. But who will help us and save us from the punishment of Allah if it visits us? Pharaoh said, I only point out to you that which I see and understand myself, and I guide you only to the path of rectitude. And he who had in fact believed in the faith brought by Moses said, O oh, my people, I fear lest you should encounter the like of the day of disaster which befell other parties of people of the past. And I fear lest you should meet the like of fate which followed the ways of the people of Noah and Ad and the people of Thamud and those who came after them. And Allah does not want his servants to go wrong. My people, I fear lest you should have to suffer on the day of calling one another for help in frightful distress, a day when you will retreat, turning your backs. No defender shall you have against the punishment of Allah, yet none can guide him to success whom Allah forsakes and adjudges to be astray. And Joseph did come to you before this with clear proofs but you continue to be in doubt about that which he brought to you, till when he died you said, Allah will never raise a messenger after him. That is how Allah forsakes and adjudges him as having gone astray, who is a transgressor and doubter. Those who dispute concerning the messages of Allah, without any proof and authority having come to them from Allah to support them. This attitude of theirs, is extremely abhorring to Allah and to those who believe. That is how it is. Allah sets a seal upon the heart of every arrogant and haughty person. And Pharaoh said, O Haman, build for me a lofty tower that I may find access to the means, the means of access to the heavens, so that I may have a look at the God of Moses. Indeed, I consider him to be a liar. And in this way, his own evil conduct was made fair-seeming to Pharaoh, and so he was prevented from following the right way. Yet all these schemes of Pharaoh resulted only in ruin. And he who had believed in Moses from the people of Pharaoh said, O oh, my people, follow me, and I will guide you in the way of rectitude. O oh my people, the life of this world is but a provision of a passing nature, and the hereafter alone is the permanent home. Those who do evil will be recompensed in proportion thereto to their evil deeds. But the men and women who believe, and at the same time do righteous deeds, it is they who will enter paradise, where they will be provided for without measure. O oh my people, how strange it is with me that I call you to salvation, whereas you call me to the fire. You call me to renounce Allah and to associate with him that of which I have no knowledge, while I call you to the Almighty, the Great Protector. No doubt that what you call me to has no title to be called upon in this world, nor in the hereafter. There is no doubt that we shall all return to Allah and that the transgressors will be the inmates of the fire. So you will soon remember what I say to you by way of advice. I entrust my cause to Allah. Indeed, Allah keeps a keen watch over his servants. Thereupon Allah saved him from the evil of their plans against him and the severest of punishment befell the people of Pharaoh. Their abode is the fire. They are presented to it morning and evening. And on the day when the appointed hour comes to pass, the angels will be commanded, Put Pharaoh's people into the severest torment. And think of the time when these disbelievers will argue one with another in the fire, and the humble will say to those who sought to be great, Verily, we were your followers. Will you not then relieve us of a portion of the punishment of the fire?
those who sought to be great will say, Now we are all adjudged to suffer in it. Verily, Allah has already passed his true judgment between his servants. And those in the fire will say to the keepers of Jahannam, Call to your Lord that he may relieve us of our agony for a while. These keepers will say, Did not your messengers of God come to you with clear signs? They will answer, Yes, indeed. They, the keepers of Jehenna, will say, Then call yourselves and your false deities. But the call of the disbelievers will be of no avail. Be assured that we do help our messengers and those who believe in them in the present life and shall help them on the day when witnesses will stand forth to give evidence. The day when their apologies will not avail the wrongdoers and they shall have the disapproval of Allah and the evil abode will be their lot. And indeed we gave Moses our guidance and made the children of Israel inherit the scripture. It was a source of guidance and served as a reminder for the possessors of pure and clear understanding. So patiently persevere. The promise of Allah is true. Ask his protection for those who committed offense against you and declare the holiness of your Lord along with his praise at nightfall and in the early hours of the morning. Those who dispute regarding the messages of Allah without any authoritative proof having come to them from God in their support, there is nothing in their minds but an ambition for greatness to which goal they can never attain. So do not bother about them. Rather, go on seeking refuge in Allah against their mischiefs. Surely he alone is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Of course, the creation of the heavens and the earth is a greater performance than the creation of humankind, but most people do not know it. The blind and the seeing are not alike, nor are those who believe and do deeds of righteousness like the evildoers, yet little is the heed you give. O disbelievers, the hour of your destruction is about to come. There is no doubt about it, yet most people do not believe. And your Lord says, Call on me, I will answer your prayer. But those who wax too proud to worship me will surely enter Jehenna, humbled and despised. It is Allah who made for your benefit the night so that you may repose in it and the day giving light enabling you to see. Verily Allah is full of grace to humankind, but most people do not give thanks. Such a gracious being is Allah, your Lord, the creator of everything. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. Whither then are you being turned away? Thus indeed were turned away those who persistently denied the messages of Allah. It is Allah who made for you the earth a resting place, and the heaven a means of protection, and physically shaped you, endowing you with special faculties of reasoning and wisdom, and perfected your shapes and faculties, making them excellent in every respect and provided you with good and pure things. Such is Allah your Lord, so blessed be Allah, Lord of the worlds. He alone is the ever-living and the fountainhead of all life. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He. So pray to Him, being sincere to Him in obedience, saying, all true and perfect praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Say, I have of course been forbidden to worship those whom you call upon apart from Allah. How can I, since there have come to me clear proofs of their worthlessness from my Lord? And I have been justly commanded to submit myself solely to the will of the Lord of the worlds. It is he who created you from dust then from a sperm drop, 
then from a blood clot. Then he brings you forth as an infant. Then he lets you live and grow. With the result that you attain to your young age of full strength. Afterwards, it so happens that you become old. Though there are some of you who are called to death earlier. Indeed, he lets you live that you may reach and complete your appointed term and that you may refrain from evil. He it is who gives life and causes death, and when he decides a thing to be, he says to it only, Be, and it comes to be in due course. Have you not considered the case of those who dispute about the teachings of Allah, how they are being turned away from the right course? Those who cried lies to the book, and to that message with which we sent our messengers shall soon come to know the consequences of their denial. When the shackles and the chains are put round their necks, and they shall be dragged into boiling water, then they shall be burnt in the fire. It will be said to them then, Where are those false deities whom you associated with him? And worshipped them apart from Allah? They will say, they are lost to us. In fact, we never prayed to anything beside Allah before this. Thus does Allah adjudge the disbelievers to be lost. It will be said to them, That is because you exalted in the land without any justification and because you behaved with vanity. Now enter the gates of Jehenna to abide therein for long. So you see how evil will be the resort of the arrogant? Patiently persevere then. Verily the promise of Allah is bound to be fulfilled. Whether we let you see descend on them in your lifetime, a part of that punishment we have promised them, or whether we cause you to die before, to us they will be brought back. And indeed we have already sent our messengers before you. There are some of them whom we have mentioned to you, and of them there are some whom we have not mentioned to you. And it is not given to a messenger to bring a message by himself except by the leave of Allah. But when the judgment of Allah comes to pass, the issues are settled in all fairness, and it is then those who endeavor to nullify the truth suffer the loss. It is Allah who made for you the cattle, so that you may ride on some of them, and you obtain your food through some of them. And indeed these cattle are of much use to you, and through them you satisfy other desires which rest in your hearts. You are borne on them by land, and on the ships by sea. And he is showing you his signs. Which of these signs of Allah will you then deny? Have they never traveled in the land? so that they could see how miserable the end of their predecessors was? They were superior to them in numbers, mightier in force, and stronger in respect of the firm marks in the land. Yet all their acquisitions were of no avail to them. And when their messengers of God came to them with clear proofs, they vainly boasted of their own partial knowledge. But they were caught by the very thing which they used to treat very lightly. So when they saw our punishment, they said, We believe in Allah alone, and we reject all that we used to associate with him. But their belief was of little use to them when they have actually seen our calamity. Such is the law of Allah that has ever been in vogue in respect of his servants. It is at such times that the disbelievers suffer a loss and are reminded. Fusilat, detailed and clear in exposition, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Hamim, Allah is praiseworthy, Lord of honor. The compilation and orderly arrangement of this Quran proceeds from the most gracious, the ever merciful God. It is a book, the verses of which are detailed and clear in exposition. It is beautifully interlinked 
and it is in a language that makes the meanings eloquently clear. It is very useful for a people who have knowledge. It is a bearer of good tidings and a warner. Yet most of these people turn away from it because they do not even give it ear. And they say, Our hearts are fortified within a covering against that book towards which you call us. We are deaf in the ear, and there exists a barrier between us and you. So carry on your work according to your creed, and surely we are the workers in accordance with our own doctrines. Say, I am but a human being like yourselves, with the only difference that it is revealed to me that your God is one God. So stick to the straight path leading to him and ask for his protection, and woe be to the polytheists. Those who do not present the zakat, and who are disbelievers in the hereafter also. On the contrary, those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, there awaits them a reward never to be cut off. Say, would you really disbelieve in him who created the earth in two aeons? And do you set up compeers with him? He alone is the Lord of the worlds. He placed therein firm mountains rising above its surface and showered it with his blessings and placed in it various provisions according to a set measure provisions to which all those who require them have equal rights, and all this he created in four aeons. Again, he directed himself towards the space. Behold, it was like a mass of gas. The Almighty God said to it, and to the earth, Come both of you, in obedience to me, willingly or unwillingly. They said, We obey you with all our will. So he ordained them seven heavens in two aeons, and assigned to each heaven its relevant function. And we decked the nearest heaven with lamps, shining stars for light, and made it to guard. Such is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. But if even now they turn away, then say, I have warned you of a scourge which will be like this scourge that befell the people of Ad and Thamud. When the messengers of God came to them successively, from before them and from behind them, from all directions with the teaching, worship none but Allah. They said, If Allah had willed to send messengers, he would certainly have sent angels. So we are indeed disbelievers in that teaching with which you have been sent. As for the people of Ad, they behaved arrogantly in the land, without any justification, and said, Who is mightier than we? Do they not see that Allah, who had created them, is mightier than them? And not only that they behaved arrogantly, they went on denying our messages persistently. So we sent upon them a furious wind for several of their ominous days in order to make them suffer a punishment of humiliation in this life, and the punishment which awaits them in the hereafter will surely be more humiliating, and against which they will not be helped. And as for the tribe of Thamud, we gave them guidance, but they preferred misguidance to guidance. So the scourge of a humiliating punishment seized them, on account of the bad deeds they had done. Yet we delivered those who believed and guarded against evil. And beware of the day when the enemies of Allah will be resurrected and driven towards the fire, while they will be formed into different groups. Till when they all reach it, their hearing and their eyes and their skins will be testifying to and bearing witness against them as to their misdeeds. And they will say to their skins, Why did you bear witness against us? They will reply, Allah made us speak, as he had given speech to everything else. And disbelievers, it is he who created you the first time, and to him you have been brought back. And while committing sinful acts, you could not hide yourselves from the fact that neither your own hearing nor your own eyes, 
nor your own skin should bear witness against you. As a matter of fact, you had assumed that even Allah did not know much of what you used to do. And it was this very wrong belief of yours, which you hold about your Lord, that has ruined you, so that you have now become of the losers. Now if in this state of theirs they show patience, even then the fire is their resort. And if they ask to be allowed to approach the threshold of God's throne, they will not be of those who are allowed to approach the threshold to seek forgiveness and mercy. And we had assigned to them certain companions who made these sinful acts which were being committed in their presence and those which had been done behind them seem fair and attractive to them. The verdict of punishment stands confirmed against them as it did in the case of the sinful communities of jinn and ordinary people who had passed away before them. As a matter of fact, they all were losers. And those who took to disbelief say, Do not listen to this Qur'an, but when it is recited, interrupt it by making noise so that you may gain the upper hand. We shall most surely make those who disbelieve meet with severe punishment, and we shall certainly recompense them for the worst what they did. Such is the punishment of the enemies of Allah. It is the fire. They shall find in it a long-lasting home. The punishment is a recompense of their persistently denying our messages. There the disbelievers will say, Our Lord, show us those two sets of people who led us astray from among both the jinn and ordinary people, and we may trample them under our feet, with the result that they become of the most abased and humiliated ones. Verily, those who say Allah is our Lord, and then remain steadfast and follow the straight path, the angels will descend upon them, saying, have no fear nor grieve, rather rejoice at the glad tidings of receiving the gardens of paradise which you have been promised. We are your patron in the present life and in the hereafter, and you shall find in it all that you desire, and you shall have therein all that you ask for. By way of hospitality and reward from the great protector, ever merciful God. And who speaks more fair than the person who calls people towards Allah and accordingly does what is right and says, I am invariably of those who submit before God. And good and evil are not alike. Repel evil with that benign and graceful way which is best. And lo, the person between whom and you there is enmity will behave as if he were your warm-hearted friend. Yet it is only the steadfast and patiently persevering who are allowed this grace, and it is only those who possess a large share of good who are allowed this moral standard. Should some sort of trouble from Satan vex you, seek refuge in Allah, for surely He, only He is the all-hearing, all-knowing. And the night and the day and the sun and the moon are some of his signs. Pay no homage to the sun or to the moon. Rather pay homage to Allah who created them. If it is him whom you really worship. If they wax too proud to prostrate before him, let them know that those who are the near ones of your Lord glorify him night and day and they never grow weary of it. And it is one of his signs that the earth that looks to you desolate stirs up with life and swells, producing herbage when we shower rainwater on it. Verily he, the Almighty Lord, who gives it life, will surely raise the dead to life as well. Verily he is the possessor of power over every desired thing. Surely those who follow crooked ways regarding our teachings are not hidden from us. You can judge for yourselves whether he who is cast into the fire better or he who comes on the day of resurrection in peaceful security. 
Now, after this clarification, you are free to do what you will. But remember, he keeps a keen watch over all that you do. Those who disbelieve in the reminder, the Quran, when it comes to them, while it is truly an invincible book, they will meet the fate of the lost ones. Falsehood cannot approach it, neither from the front nor from behind. It is a revelation that proceeds portion by portion from one, all wise, the most praiseworthy. Nothing is said in the form of objection to you what was not already said to the messengers before you. Verily, your Lord is master of protection for the believers and also master of woeful retribution for the disbelievers. Had we made it a Quran in indistinct and inexpressive language, these fault finders would have surely said, Why has not the subject matter of its verses been made clear in exposition? What? Can indistinct and inexpressive language and an eloquently clear language be one and the same thing? Say, it is a wonderful guidance and healing to those who believe. But as to those who do not believe, there is deafness in their ears, and this Qur'an is obscure to them with regard to its factual truth. And they are, as if to say, being called to from a place afar. And indeed, we gave Moses the scripture, but when the followers of the scripture began tampering with it, differences arose about it. Had it not been a word of promise already made by your Lord, the judgments between them, the disbelievers, would have been passed long ago by the destruction of those who dispute about the prophecy. And they are in disquieting and grave doubt concerning this, the fulfillment of the prophecy. He that does right does it for the good of his own soul, and he that does evil it shall recoil on him, and your Lord is the least unjust to his servants.